I'm back again with another story. Before I go to bed, I'm going to read one more book to my cat students. It's called John Henry, an American Legend, Story and Pictures by Ezra Jack Keats. For Charlemagne and Joseph, John Henry, an American Legend, Story and Pictures by Ezra Jack Keats. A hush settled over the hills. The sky swirled sound asleep round the moon. The river stopped murmuring, the wind stopped whispering, and the frogs and the owls and the crickets fell silent, all watching and waiting and listening. Then the river roared. The wind whispered and whistled and sang. The frogs croaked, the owls hooted, and all the crickets chirped. Welcome, welcome, echoed through the hills. I don't think that big black giant baby. And John Henry was born. Born with a hammer in his hand. Bang, 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 rang little John, John Henry's hammer through the cabin as he crawled about. What's that rascal up to now, his mother chuckled. And before she knew it, he was big enough to help her around the house. As he grew up, he did a man's work with his father. One day, John Henry thought, I'm taller and stronger than anyone around. It's time I went out into the world. He said goodbye to his mother and father, and off he went. He worked on farms and then cotton fields, but all of that was too tame, so he got himself a job on a riverboat. Okay, John Henry. One stormy night, the ship pl plowed through the darkness. Suddenly, the big steel rod that turned the paddle wheel broke. The wheel stopped turning, smashed, went the rod through the bottom of the ship. Pump water, shouted the captain. Get to port before get to port before we sink. John Henry leaped to the paddle wheel crank. He seized it, pushed, and grunted and pulled. Slowly the giant wheel turned. With all his strength he kept it turning. Lord Almighty help us, someone whispered in that long dark night. As day broke, they sighted shore and pulled into port. A thunderous cheer went up for John Henry. John Henry felt the new excitement in the air. Men were talking of railroads being built from the Atlantic to the Pacific. They're going to lay their they're going to lay those tracks over rivers, across prairies and deserts, and right through mountains, and through Indian lands and st stampeding buffalo herds and bad lands. Goodbye, boys, cried John Henry. I'm going to swing me a hammer on, on them beautiful new tracks. My hands are just itching to hold the hammer again, John Henry said. He tried one for size and laughed. It sure does feel fine how he drove those spikes singing to the clanging of his hammer. The men joined in, their voices singing, hammers ringing, and John Henry's gang was in the lead. As day after day, the tracks moved steadily westward. Rising across their path was a sprawling mountain range. Its snow-capped its snow -capped peaks reached high into the clouds. We'll have to tunnel through, said his friend Lil' Bill. It'll be awful. It'll be awful dangerous. Could be caved in. Someone put it in. That suits me fine, said John Henry. Me too, added Lil' Bill. Here's how we'll do it, boys. The four men called out. A couple of men all drive a hole into the rack. Then the powdered men put dynamite into the hole and exploded. The others cart the loose rock away. We'll do this again and again till we have a tunnel right through this mountain. And it's going to be a real big tunnel, boys. Big enough for a giant locomotive pulling one one of them long strings or trains. All right, boys, blast away. Deep into the mountains, they worked. As John Henry sang and echoed through the tunnel, the powder men got ready to blast more rock. They filled the hole with dynamite, put it in a long fuse, and lit it. Run, men, cried the foreman. 
that they all scrambled back, ready to dash clear of the blast. At the instant came a great cracking and rumbling, and the entire tunnel trembled around them. It's the cave in. We're trapped. There was no place to run. The fuse burned closer to the dawning light. John Henry was nearest the, the fuse. He ran to put it out, but tripped and fell. Oh, shit. Ooh, I'm hurt bad, he groaned. I can't get up. The fuse burned farther out of reach. Others rushed toward it, but they were too far away. Suddenly, John Henry remembered. He still had his hammer in his hand. Down came the hammer, smack on the burning tip. The fuse was out. Danger passed. Sighs of relief filled the smoky tunnel. Woo, help me up, boys, mumbled John Henry. Clearing their way through the cave in, the men carried him to safety. He was smart. Some days later, they heard an unfamiliar clatter. Down the tunnel came a group of men with a strange machine. This is a steam drill. It can drill more holes faster than any six men combined. A new man bragged. Who can beat that? John Henry stopped for forward. Try me. He and Lil' Bill took their workplaces. John Henry gripped his hammer. Lil' Bill clutched his steel drill. Check the machine, came in order. A nervous hand fell on the switch. In the dark, both sides waited for the signal to start. A hoarse, hoarse voice counted. One, two. Three, the machine shrieked as it started. John Henry swung his hammer and the crash of steel on steel split the air. Clang, bang, clang. The drill got red hot in Lil' Bill's hand. He quickly dropped it and picked up another. Hiss, whistle, rattle. Me and fr frantically heaved coal into the hungry, roaring engine and poured water into the steaming boiler. Whoop, clang, whoop, bang. John Henry's hammer whistled as he sw swung it. Chug, chug, clatter, rattled the machine. Hour after hour, raced by the machine was ahead. Hand me that 20-pound hammer, little Bill. Harder and faster crashed the hammer. Great chunks of rock fell as John Henry ripped hole after hole into the tunnel well. The machine rattled and whistled and drilled even faster. Friends those John Henry and Lil Bill with cold water to keep them going. Then John Henry took a deep breath, picked up two sledgehammers, and sang, "Ain't no hammer strikes such fire, strikes like lightning, Lord, I and I won't tire." Hammers like this, low. there's never been. I'll keep swinging them, Lord, until we win. John Henry swung both mighty hammers faster and faster. He moved so fast the men could see only a blur. It sparked from his striking hammer. His strokes rang out like great heartbeats. At the other side of the tunnel, at the other side of the tunnel, the machine shrieked, groaned, and rattled and drilled. Then all at once, it sh shocked and shuddered, wheezed, and stopped. Frankly, men worked to get it going again, but they couldn't. It had collapsed. John Henry's hammering still rang and echoed through the tunnel with a strong and steady beat. Picture. Suddenly there was a great crash. Light streamed into the dark tunnel. John Henry had broken through. Wild cries of joy burst from the men. Still holding one of his hammers, John Henry stepped out into the glowing light of a dying day. 
It was the last step he ever took. Even the great heart of John Henry could not bear. The strain of his last task, John Henry died with his hammer in his hand. If you listen to the locomotives roaring through the tunnels and across the land, you'll hear them singing, singing of that great steel driving man, John Henry. Listen. Oh, he died with his hammer in his hand. So sad. The end.